This rich stone forest, this epic chant, this gaiety, this grand choiring shout of affirmation. The American filmmaker Orson Welles once described France's Chartres Cathedral with these words, but they could be used for many of Europe's famed Gothic cathedrals, such as France's Saint Denis, the Cologne Cathedral in Germany, the Salisbury Cathedral in England, and the world-famous Notre Dame in Paris. An article here describes the process and people involved with the construction of these cathedrals. Built primarily from the 12th to the 16th century, these monuments to religion, art, engineering, and craftsmanship connect Europe's Middle Ages to the Renaissance. Some were built to commemorate religious burial sites, others were built to house religious artifacts, and still others were built simply to replace previous cathedrals destroyed by fire. Some of the most iconic elements of these structures include their sculpture, their towering ceilings, and their stained glass. But three elements of construction allowed these cathedrals to become the majestic structures they remain today. These are the pointed arch, the ribbed vault, and of course, the flying buttress. Structural arches have been used since antiquity, famously used by the ancient Romans in their many aqueducts, triumphal arches, and of course the Colosseum. The semicircular arches they used supported structures across a span, but there was a problem. The lateral forces they transmitted to their supports required relatively massive columns, and the distance they could span was relatively limited. Pointed arches, however, helped solve this problem. They were developed in Muslim civilizations and implemented in Islamic architecture, including the Pool of Arches in Ramla, Israel, the Al-Aqsa Mosque in East Jerusalem in the West Bank, and the Ibn Taloon Mosque in Cairo, Egypt. These arches helped distribute a greater percent of the load vertically, rather than laterally, which allowed walls to become much taller, much stronger, and much less massive. The wall space no longer needed for heavy stone was used for the soaring windows of stained glass which decorate so many of these cathedrals. The redistribution of forces that pointed arches generated for walls was replicated by the use of ribs and vaulted ceilings. These ribs directed the weight of these massive ceilings into the same wall sections that supported the pointed arches. This allowed ceilings to become taller, wider, and more awe-inspiring. And finally, to support the lateral forces generated by the vaulted ceilings, flying buttresses were used to support these walls, which were now much taller and thinner than their Roman predecessors. I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at the elements of structural engineering developed over decades, if not centuries, that helped create these grand, choiring shouts of affirmation of which Orson Welles spoke. Have a great day.